So I'm just in between testing my RTX 3080 Ti. Well, I'm just starting to do my reviews. I just wanted to start my benchmarking stuff. And whenever I plug in my 3080 Ti inside my VGA test bench, because that's still a 10900K right now, clocked at five gigahertz, that's sufficient for all cards for testing. It's always stuck at VGA detection. I have no idea why. And I just added my Gigabyte 3060, as you can see. No issue booting at all. Hmm. Now swap back to the 3080. Use different slot this time just to make sure that the slot is not broken, but again, detection issue. Swap to a different testing setup. So it's C590 with the Maximus 13 Hero instead of C490. It's again 10900K, but a different 10900K. Yeah, the only thing which are the same now are the PSU and the memory. Let's check. Well, that's not great. <laughs> okay. Again, VGA detection. Yeah, just to be safe, I also swapped the PSU to a Seasonic PSU, just not to run into some weird compatibility issue, but it's again stuck at D6. I swapped everything except for the memory, but it can't be the memory. I mean, that would not make any sense. And it's booting with any other VGA, so yeah. Great review. And again, just to double check that this setup is also working, I just plugged a tiny card. I didn't want to plug a big one just because of the power connectors, but yeah. That is also working. Okay, so the only thing we didn't swap so far is the monitor, except for the memory, but we know that, I mean, it's booting red, so the memory can't be the issue, but the only thing I didn't swap so far is this monitor. It wouldn't make any sense. It's a good Acer uh, G-Sync Ready NVIDIA monitor. Yeah, let's see. Okay, so I swapped to a different Acer Predator monitor. Everything else is still the same, even the same display port cable, as you can see with this setup, it's running. And now let's check again with the 3080 Ti. Yep, this report is connected. What's weird is that it can, I mean, it's detecting something. You can see that it will switch blue. At least that's what it did on a different monitor, but then, uh, what the fuck? Uh, huh? I don't know. That, that is probably the weirdest compatibility issue I have ever seen in like 15 years. So whenever this card is plugged with the other Acer monitor, then the card is not detected. It's not like the monitor doesn't get a display signal. Like, I mean, it doesn't get a display signal, but it's causing the card not to be detected on the mainboard, while any other card works with the other monitor. I just double checked with a different 3080 from Asus, with the 3090 from Gigabyte, any other card works with the other monitor. So it's not like the monitor is broken, but whenever this, this specific monitor is plugged in this 3080 Ti, the, the card is not detected on the board. That is some really weird shit. That just cost me like three hours. At least I can start. Today's video is supported by Hetzna with the dedicated root server AX41. The experienced data center provider Hetzna offers its hosting products for private and business clients with data centers in Germany and Finland. While offering the most recent and best technical standards, Hetzna also focuses on ecological use of hardware and runs 100% green electricity. The AX41 is a brilliant entrance dedicated root server and comes by default with the 6 core AMD Ryzen 3600 64GB memory and two 512GB NVMe drive. The entire rack design and also the cooling solutions are developed in-house at Hetzner here in Germany and with 24-7 support, high-speed internet connection, DDoS protection and unlimited traffic. Find more in the link below. Now everything is running as expected, running the first benchmarks, 3D mark times by Xtreme uh, GT1. And the first impression is not even bad, 63.3 FPS. That is even faster than my stock 3090, that is surprising. Clockwise, 1800 MHz, not bad. I thought let's quickly go over to overclocking and this particular GPU seems to be better than my 3090. At least the 3090 from Gigabyte I had was maxing out at like 1940 MHz, somewhat in that direction. And this card on air, as you can see, it's somewhere between 1950, 1960 and 2040 is something I saw somewhere, 2050. So that GPU 
is pretty good. Also, that's the setting I adjusted in MSI Afterburner, so just max out core voltage, power limit, the core clock at plus 250 is the max. If I go to plus 70, it crashes. Same goes for memory clock, 1100 works, 1300 immediately crashes. Looking at the score, 69.59 FPS. That is quite a bit faster than my 3090, even with overclocking the 3090 max out at 66.78 FPS. So yeah, the 3080 Ti with overclocking is leading this chart. By the way, welcome to this video. I completely forgot about that in the beginning of this video because I was just mid in between testing and debugging and I thought I will take you on to my journey and it's still such a weird issue because even after installing the driver, I double checked again, put in the other monitor and it's still stopping at VGA detection whenever the other monitor is plugged. No clue what's causing this also forwarded it to NVIDIA and waiting for some feedback if they have any info, if there's some kind of weird compatibility issue, I don't know. Yeah, I will continue testing the 3080 Ti, I will do some gaming benchmarks now, but so far I'm not sure what to think about a 3080 Ti. I mean, let's not even go that far talking about pricing and availability, I'm just tired of those discussions and comments, but just looking at the Founders Edition itself, this is pretty much like a 3090 with less memory because it's 12 instead of 20, but it's almost the same GPU. It's like 2.5% less CUDA cores, which is, it's not that much. You can almost neglect that. And then it's using the 3080 cooler instead of the 3090 cooler. The 3090 is the much bigger card. I mean, just talking about the Founders Edition, the 3090 has a beefier cooler, beefier cooler, so it can dissipate more heat. In theory, there's more headroom for overclocking. You should have better temps compared to this one. Not sure what to think about the 3080 Ti, but at least performance wise, it's looking quite good so far. I just finished running all my game tests on the 3080 Ti and now I'm just verifying the 3090 again with the Nvidia press driver of the 3080 Ti because this one was, it was actually pretty fast. And I was worried that now the 3090 is also getting some kind of boost using the new press driver, but the performance is identical. Back then I was testing with times by Extreme GT1 and it was 62.86 FPS. Now it's 62.94 and that is absolutely measurement tolerance. Starting with Remnant from the Ashes in 4K Ultra, you can see the 3080 Ti is just 4 FPS behind the 3090 in 1% low and average FPS are pretty much identical. Switching to 1440p resolution, you can see that pretty much 3080, 3080 Ti and 3090 are almost identical in this game. And I'm pretty sure if you would plug any of those in your system, you would not be able to tell a difference. Out of personal interest, because I'm still playing a lot of PUBG, I tested PUBG again, and as you can see, the 3080 Ti is pretty much identical to the 3090 running 4K resolution, but also running the eSports setting. Switching to 1440p, the 3080 Ti is slightly faster in average FPS, while it's slightly slower in 1% low FPS. Again, quite interesting. AMD cards are very strong with PUBG in lower resolutions. We're closing our benchmarks with control, running 4K resolution, maximum details, and also ray tracing enabled. 4K resolution, 3080 Ti and 3090 are pretty much identical. It's just one FPS difference. Switching to control in 1440p, the 3090 is faster than the 3080 by about 4 FPS in 1% low and 1 FPS in average. The 3080 Ti seems to be a very solid card. I mean, just looking at the performance numbers, it's almost identical to a 3090, which makes sense because in most of the cases, you don't need 20 gigabyte of memory, which are on the 3090, which seems to be kind of the reason why this card exists. Otherwise, I don't see why it would exist because the 3080 Ti and 3090 have the same performance for me in all the applications I was running. Obviously, if you run some professional applications, it could be different if you can utilize so much memory. For any game, this is probably absolutely suitable when it comes to the memory, and I guess having less memory on the card, in theory, could make a card cheaper, could increase availability because you have more memory available to spend on the cards. At least that's the theory. We never know what availability and pricing will be in the end, but just looking at it from like an objective point, it's a very solid card for any gaming application. I'm personally also still a big fan of the Founders Edition design, just subjectively speaking, I just like how it looks. It feels very high quality, so I'm a big fan of that. I'm still also not a big fan of the power connector, it's still stupid, shouldn't be there. But yeah, seems to be a great card, but yeah, let's not talk about pricing and availability. Alright, thanks for tuning in, see you next time, bye bye.